It has been a hot minute since I last filmed a video for this channel. I don't even remember what the last video was, but I've been busy, been improving, been working, and I figured I'd give you guys an update on the trailer because I'm in the process, or at least in the works, of starting my next build and ditching the trailer. At least it's in the thought process right now, going through all the financial uh, trips of it and things like that. Um, but as you can see, I've got a topper on my work truck and this opened up an idea for me. If I end up going the route I want, I will, you know, of course, give you guys a video on that. But let's see the trailer because it's been a while. The trailer's been through the works. Um, all of these dents are from when I first got this cabinet right here. It had these wheels right here on it. Excuse my day tear back here with my daughter um but with those wheels i could not keep it mounted to the wall it pulled like eight screws out of the wall and fell multiple times going to jobs and things like that and i'd get there and open the door chemicals would be all over the ground this would be laying here i mean it's all dented all over it the top is creased in that corner's creased it's got dents on the door the first time it fell it was only like a week old so that was really upsetting um but we'll start from the back oh yeah and then this i had a lady not paying attention and went through a red light and t-boned me which actually totaled out the trailer and completely reimbursed me for the amount i spent on the trailer so that was pretty nice um i do have to rebuild the brakes on this side because it cracked the drum housing but if we go to the back you can tell i no longer have the wall the wall was nice to hide all of this, but what wasn't nice about it was working in Florida, not having a breeze in here. It would just be stagnant heat at the front of the trailer. You would go in there to escape the sun for a minute, take a water break, you know, eat a snack, something, and it was just ungodly hot. I bought a big fan that I had mounted to the ceiling. It helped, but nothing helped as much as pulling this wall down. I also, I had to move the tank like two times, move it forward and just kind of see what worked, um, which left a really big like two foot gap between the tank and the wall of wasted space. Um, so I just opted to take the wall down. It's all sitting over here. But we moved our generator that used to be at the door. Um, I went from over there to right here when I still had the wall. Um, I burnt through an air hose and had to replace that. So I moved the generator to this side um, and it works well over there. So then I built this secondary wall. We've got our extension cord, our power reel right here mounted like this. We've got our air hose and then our water reel. We also have a new Ryobi pressure washer. Well, it was new. It's like three or four months old now. I bought a two-year warranty on it because I was going through a phase of pressure washers failing in the middle of a job. Still got the OG rigid air compressor. We've got a, what is this, C-Flow water pump. Uh, it only turns on when it realizes there's a release in pressure. Um, so whenever you squeeze the handle, that pump will start going. It'll go to the pressure washer and that all works. We've got ourselves a foam cannon wall mount over here. Um, I absolutely hate these foam cannons. You'll see all the social media detailers and stuff saying to recommend these, don't waste your $80 a piece on them. They're pieces of crap. Once that filter clogs and they don't tell you that you can't find the filters anywhere and the Amazon filters don't work, you're screwed, you're out $80. Um, this one is the only one I have that still halfway works. I use this for my Totemi PW and it leaks out the front here and the rest foams, but at least works. This one doesn't foam whatsoever. My Walmart one, it's going on almost a year strong. Got me a Milwaukee battery charger mounted up there. I originally wanted it right here, but I did not plan well enough and I did not have enough room. Um, I also wanted to do a shelf right here, but again, I didn't plan well enough and I didn't have enough room. Uh, in order to build the shelf, I would have to basically permanently mount that air compressor there and God forbid something ever happened and I need to get it out, I'd have to take the shelf apart. So I'm not doing that. We've got a gorilla ladder mounted up on the wall over here for when I'm doing RVs and big trailers. Um, this thing is fantastic. It goes up to like four foot tall and it's like a portable scaffolding. That's nice. I've got my OG step stool. Been ran over by a FedEx truck and everything. FedEx truck never even stopped. We've got ourselves an A-frame sign. 
Not our canopy, got a broom attached to that. Two gas cans, my bucket with the seat lid. I've got my two buckets. I've got a wheel bucket and a wash bucket. Got our vacuum. I'm actually about to downsize. I bought this when I very first started my business because I was like, oh, I don't want to be emptying it all the time. I have to empty this thing like once every month and a half, two months. Don't need one that big. Still rocking our Uberflex hose. I just actually today rebuilt the swivel on this. I had to replace the O-rings in it. Um, it was leaking. It would periodically leak. And then here recently, it's just been nonstop. And the pressure washer turns on and off when you're not using it. And that's annoying. Over here, as you can tell, I hang up my towels. I need to get a sheet of aluminum for this. Just have not done it because um, I'm contemplating getting rid of the trailer so i don't want to invest a lot more in it and then these hooks right here are to hang mats to dry after i wash them um and that's really it for the back of the trailer so if we work our way around in here we've got our detail cart you know just like everyone else i watch youtube videos of ways to improve my business and you see all these people that are like oh time efficiency the faster you get up, get set up the less trips to the van or the trailer or whatever get yourself a cart and put everything on it i hate this cart i loved it for the first two months it an ideal world it would work perfect you set everything on it it's right there next to you what doesn't work driveways with an incline um multiple vehicles having to load and unload this from your van your trailer whatever it gets annoying picking this thing up and putting it down after every single job, having to shove it back in here. It just wasn't ideal. Um, so it's sat right here and has become a like shelf in here, basically. Um, so I've got my detail brush. I've got my window scraper with a razor blade for removing stickers, my carpet removers, carpet remover. I use this detail factory uh, tire brush to do stripes. I've got my air freshener, Milwaukee battery, extra hose fittings, extra pressure washer fittings. Um, I keep my keys for my cabinet in here. And as you can tell, it's broke off because one of the times it fell, it broke the key off inside it. Um, got my window cleaner, Tornador. Uh, this is for trim shine. This is for leather conditioning, glass towel. Um, and I've got my impact that I use for drill brushes and some extra screws that I use for mounting stuff in here back there. It's nice about this table it, or this shelf, this rolling cart. My table fits perfectly right in between it. So that's nice. I've got an extra air hose um, that I had bought in the middle of the day when I burnt a hole through my last one, but this one wasn't long enough to go in the hose reel. So it's just a backup right now. My paint done with my tire shine in it, my blower down there. Um, the nice thing about these water tanks, um, the IBC totes or whatever they're called, it's really overkill for size. I don't need it this big but it is very nice to stack stuff on and hang bottles from. Um, so I don't have to build any bottle rack or anything. This works perfectly fine. Um, got a broken paint gun here, extra mitt. Um, this is an extra polishing rack and more of those hooks. I had bought one of the Milwaukee battery adapters for the lights. I failed to realize you needed an inverter for that. So it just burnt up my light strip. Over here, I've got my gas-powered leaf blower mounted up on the wall. I converted to electric because I really, I'd get like two cars out of this and I'd have to fill it up. And it was so annoying. You'd be in the middle of drying a black car in direct sunlight and this thing run out of gas. So it's kind of just permanently mounted up here. I've got a polishing rack with all my towels, my polishing compound, and my Milwaukee polisher. Absolutely love this thing. This is a 15 millimeter absolutely love it one of my favorite purchases amazing i've got my buckets hanging here clean towels dirty towels um this is my metal polishing tote all my aluminum and metal polishing equipment is in there this is the fan i have during summertime office chair for rain delays or lunch whatever this is my trash can i've got a light for polishing or working in the dark spare tire extra fan um, bags with extra towels and stuff like that in there. This is my new extractor. This thing's fantastic for the price point. Um, I want a Mighty. I don't want to spend the money on a Mighty. And this was $140 and it comes with the extractor head, a water tank and everything. So I absolutely love it. 
I've got some extra buckets over here, um, a transfer pump that I'm unable to return, but I have a warranty on, so I need to see about a refund on that. Extra pressure washer hose. Let's open the cabinet and I'll show you guys how we're rocking in there. So we open up the cabinet. We've got our McCulloch steamer right here. This thing works fantastic. Got some floor mats steering wheel covers, rags, glass glass rags, um, scrub ninjas, batteries, um, little odds and ends bottles like Dugon, trim restore, trim restore pads, water spot remover. We've got a battery powered fan. That is absolute game changer for summertime. Um, get yourself a Milwaukee battery powered fan, Ryobi, DeWalt, whatever, doesn't matter brand. I just like Milwaukee stuff, so that's what I use. Put it in the car with you. So say you're working in the back seat, put it on the other side of the back seat or put it on the center console blowing at you. Game changer. It'll save your life. If you're in the southern states where I'm in central Florida, it gets hot. And a lot of the housing developments that I work in, it's like 115, 120 degrees. And it's humid down here. So that heat is miserable. Um, I don't know if you guys have been on my channel before. I did a Porsche last summer that I almost passed out. It was bad. So that fan has been a lifesaver. Then we've got our Kotemi, McGuire's Gold Class, PS Interior Express, super clean. Got some paint prep, iron decon. This is my sandpaper, my eight inch buff, GoPro mount, um, extra pads, gloves, stuff like that in there. This is kind of my miscellaneous toolbox right here. I've got two vacuum filters, drill brushes, extra wheelbarrow brushes, extra air tools, extra detail brushes. This is just like my extra stuff. So if something breaks on a job, I have more. Um, these are all vacuum attachments, vacuum bags. This is all my chemicals, detail spray, uh, carpet upholstery cleaner, tire shine, um, wheel and tire cleaner, spray wax, stuff like that. If you guys want one of these cabinets, I highly recommend these metal ones over the plastic ones. I had originally bought a plastic one and the shelves kept breaking, um, doors kept opening. I could not keep the doors shut. I could not keep the shelves together. Every time I'd open it, all the shelves would be broke, chemicals laying on top of each other, chemicals leaking. It was a big pain in the ass. I picked that shelf up from Sam's Club. Um, I think it was $240, the plastic shelf that I bought from Lowe's, which I thought was a good price, was $180. 60 more dollars, and I would have had a full metal shelf. I don't have an issue with weight on those. Um, you guys see all the stuff that I have stacked on them. They don't bend, they don't bow. You're not worried about them collapsing. This thing's been great. The only issue I had was when it was on the wheels, which if it was in a garage, no problem. Um, but it being on the wheels inside the trailer, um, just turns and stuff like that caused it to rip the screws out of the wall and fall. So check out things like that. You know, you don't have to go to a hardware store to get a shelf or anything like that. I picked that up from Sam's Club and I absolutely love it. But this is a 7x12 trailer and, you know, besides me getting T-boned, I haven't had any issues with it. Would I buy the trailer again? I mean, I've owned it for right out of a year now, and it's been great being able to be mobile and stuff like that. Obviously, I would stay mobile going to something else, but I think if I could do this all over again with the knowledge I have now, I would not buy a trailer this big. I was worried about not having enough room and being able to fit all this stuff in it and do all these fancy builds and stuff like that that you see on YouTube, you know, water deionizer and stuff like that. You don't need all that guys to be honest with you i've been in business almost two years now full time and you don't need all that this is a 7 by 12 trailer with a seven foot six interior height i'm six six so i got it super tall because i wanted to store stuff overhead and do all these fancy lights and do this really cool trailer build and i've owned it for a year and i still don't have anything like that so if i stand in the back of it back here i mean I'm palming the roof. That's how much height is in here. I could have went with a 6'6 interior height, had it just at head level to where I could stand up in there, but that'd be about it. But do you see anything hanging from the roof? Do you see anything mounted on the roof? Anything cool? Because I don't. I had the fan in the summer mounted to the roof, but I could have done that in a 6'6 trailer. Um, so I could have went, you know, a foot shorter 
And I also probably could have went with like a six by 10. Um, I mean, I still have a foot on this side. If I didn't have that detail cart, I'd have two foot on that side um, that it could be narrower. It would be lighter. Um, everything would be more compact and organized. Uh, it wouldn't just be scattered throughout it. The space comes in handy for times like when it's raining and you need somewhere to sit out of the rain. You can also do that in your vehicle. So if you're looking at buying a trailer for your detailing business, don't go over the top like I did. I spent six grand on this trailer, brand new. I built this trailer. I pieced it together, the axle, the height, the width, the length, everything. Um, so if I could do this all over again, I would not go with one this size. Um, I would go with one smaller. Um, and that's really about it. So if you made it to the end of the video, I want to let you kind of know what my plans are for the next build. The next build, I think we're going to go with a newer style F-150 extended cab, long bed, work truck with a utility topper. The utility topper, what that means is you can open up these windows like this. Instead of these windows, they slide. They would open up like this, just like the back window. So on the passenger side, I would mount my hose reels right here. That way I would have everything access towards the customer's house. Cause you know, in America, you know, cheeseburger land, we drive this way. So I'd be pulled up in front of their house with this side of my truck facing them. So I would have all my hose reels mounted right here. Now let's use my bed. I got my wife's old bumper in here, but I would do the water tank at the very back generator right here on a slide so it could slide out and then things that i use all the time would be right here so like my wash buckets i would have them stacked up like how they are in my trailer now i'd have them right here little tiny one gallon vacuum right here unless i had a vacuum reel and then the vacuum to be stationary mounted and then if we came around on this side where this utility window would be folding up i would have a rack with all my chemicals. So I can do my gallons of extra stuff that I need up here, say like six gallons of stuff, and then my spray bottles, say like 12 spray bottles right here. That would be everything I needed. I could do my extra detail brushes and things like that right there. We'd probably go with a 120 water tank at the very back. Um, it being an eight foot bed, the water tank is 33 inches. We would still have about five foot of room in between the water tank. Generators only like three foot. So there'd still be two foot in between the generator and the water tank. And the water tank is not gonna take up the whole width of the bed. So there'd be room next to the water tank on each side for storing other things that you don't use all the time that could stay in here. So we could do an air, com air compressor on one side, pressure washer on the other side, generator right here. If we had a vacuum reel, we could do the vacuum right in front of the generator or over to the side. Um, they make drawer systems or slide outs that you could put on this side as well if you wanted to slide everything out. And then I'm going with an extended cab so I have a back seat for things like my canopy, my steamer, my A-frame sign, and my extractor. Those four things I want in the back seat because that was what I could not stand when I worked out of this truck bed when I first started was having to climb into the bed to get something I wanted. Um, so if I have all the stuff that I use in arm's reach, I'll never have to climb into the bed unless something breaks. And hopefully that is not going to be very often. And all our hose reels would be accessible from the side. All our chemicals would be accessible from the side. It would just be the equipment that would be in the bed. So there's a little insight to the next build I plan on doing within the next couple months. I'm in the process right now of securing the financial side of that. I've got everything in line. Just one more step I have to cross. Um, and then it's the mental barrier of being self-employed of, am I gonna have frequent jobs to pay for this? But if you guys made it at the end of the video, thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to see some day in the life content, please let me know. And if I have an outreach for it, I'll film it. If not, see you guys in the next one. Peace.